Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines, host of the podcast NOV Today, and glad that you are joining us for our 12th episode of NOV Live, where we have a conversation with technical experts about uh, emerging technologies and uh, technologies that are shaping the world around us. So today's conversation is no different. We're actually going to be talking about a portion of NOV's business that actually deals with something that some might not know that we have in our portfolio, and that's uh, regarding uh, uh, small cell uh, small cell poles. So uh, we're going to be talking about that and uh, the technology there. It's going to be really interesting, and it's been one that I've been looking forward to. So uh, before we get to our guest today, uh, we are going to head over to uh, Shelby Dumain, who's our digital communications specialist, and she is going to give us some insight on how you can participate as well as bring up uh, our standing segment. So, hey, Shelby, good to see you. Hey, Michael, it's great to see you as well. Uh, you know, so one of the best parts about, I think, this show, apart from the technology that we feature, is that we're a live show. And uh, the reason we're live is so we can get questions from the audience, from you watching at home as the show goes on. We can actually ask our experts um, on air. So if you'd like to join in, if you'd like to submit your questions, you can do so by commenting them whether you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, you can go ahead and just easily comment your questions below. I'm there in the comment sections uh, through the whole show. So I'm gonna be looking at as all the questions and we're gonna get to as many as we can um, by the end of the show. If your question maybe doesn't get answered or if you have more that you wanna bring up you know, after the show or you wanna submit any feedback you have for us, there's a couple ways you can do that as well. Uh, so the first one is we have an email you can email us at socialmedia at NOV.com. And uh, we'd love to, to take your questions and we check that email inbox every single day to see what people are saying. And then we also have a comment line, which this is you know maybe my favorite. Uh, so you can call, you can leave a voicemail, you can stay anonymous, or you can let us know your name and, and we'll kind of feature you on the show. But that number is, uh, air, uh, you, uh, sorry, country code plus one, three, four, six, two, two, three, Four seven nine nine. I'm gonna say it again just because I feel like the more I can repeat, the the easier it is to memorize. So, uh, three four six two two three four seven nine nine, and that's how you can call us and leave your comment or question there for after the show. Um, but like I mentioned, for your questions here that you want to ask our experts Lauren and Kurt today, go ahead and comment them down below. Uh, so now that brings us to our next segment, which is Rig Geeks. Rig Geeks, Post of the Week. All right, so if this is maybe your first time watching or if you've seen this show before, um, then Rig Geeks is a segment where I ask you a trivia question, uh, usually kind of around the topic we're going to be talking about today, which is small cell pulls um, or, or pulls in general. And then at the end of the show, we're actually going to reveal the answer. So after I ask it, go ahead and post, comment, let us know what you think the correct answer is. Uh, so for today, we actually have an image we're gonna show. So we have four choices here. And our question today is out of these four, A, B, C, or D, which of these polls is one that's offered by the business unit Amaron poll products? So if you're familiar with Amaron um, or, or with the kind of portfolio that NOV has, uh, which of these polls do you think is something that we offer? All right, so stay tuned. At the end of the show, uh, we're gonna reveal that answer. So stick around till then and let us know what you think. All right, thanks, Shelby. Looks uh, like a good good trivia for today. So uh, we're uh, glad that you're here with us today. And looking in the comments, I see folks that have joined us from Algeria, from India, uh, here in Houston. Looks like we have those uh, joining from Chad, uh, Chile. Uh, let's see, Scotland, Indonesia, Jordan, and many others. Uh, let's see, it looks like Kuwait. Uh, Brazil and many others. So glad that you all are joining us today and appreciate you carving out time to uh, join us in today's conversation. So as we mentioned or at the top of the show, uh, NOV has a, a wide breadth of, of offerings and solutions for customers in many different uh, areas of uh, in, uh, industries, inclusive of uh, cell cell towers or cell cell poles. And small cell poles is actually the area of conversation that we're going to have today. So wanna go ahead and bring in our guests. We have uh, Kurt Blackburn, who is a sales engineer, and Lauren Brooks, who's a sales manager 
uh, with business development here uh, in the Amaron Polls uh, group. So uh, Kurt and Lauren, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. All right. So, you know, I, I really enjoy talking about, uh, you know, just really any type of technology uh, and specifically technology that uh, impacts, you know, broad, broad areas of, of, of uh, you know, our community. Of course, we do that in the energy space. We do that in a lot of our in, in kind of industrial space with mixers, things like that. Uh, but, but, you know, small cell poles, I think that is really, really interesting. And maybe because I don't, I hardly know anything about it, but I know enough about it to know uh, its impact. So I'm really excited for you all to maybe help us understand a little more about uh, this technology. Uh, and so maybe uh, I'll kind of just jump in with you, Lauren. So, you know, for those that maybe aren't as familiar uh, with, uh, you know, how the industry works and, and maybe specifically uh, about Amaron and where, where they play, could you maybe help kind of set the stage for us? Because I always like to make sure that those that don't know uh, can kind of get caught up to, to speed in their conversation. Well, we've been manufacturing poles for a number of different markets for decades, uh, street lights, utility poles, and things like that. But it's only been in recent years that we've gotten involved in the telecom industry. And that's because of some more recent technology developments in that industry that have given, given us an opportunity to participate. I think when a lot of people think about wide scale telecommunications equipment. They think about the macro towers that you see out in a field as you're driving down the interstate, um, something that serves a, a wide radius um, and, and hits a lot of customers all with, with one giant piece of equipment. And uh, those are still definitely in operation and, and, and serve a, a you know, important purpose uh, to reach reach a lot of customers that way. But in more recent years, the focus has been on developing technology uh, that we call small cell and, you know, as it sounds, it's it's smaller equipment um, that can be mounted on smaller poles closer together. So instead of having a giant tower every you know so many miles, you have a smaller pole every so many yards down a street, and that's uh, designed for more densely populated areas like neighborhoods and downtowns. Um, in large cities and things, and so uh, that's that's kind of where we come in. Um, Cities have a lot of poles already in place for light poles and things like that. And, and in many cases, they're, they're poles that we've manufactured in the past. And in some cases, those poles can support the weight of additional equipment. But in a lot of cases, they've only been designed to support the lighting structures or whatever it is they were originally designed for. And so what we've been able to do is come in and help design a like for like pole, meaning that Aesthetically, it looks the same as the existing poles that you have on a particular street in a, you know, for an example, in a neighborhood or downtown area. But with the additional structural support that's needed to support the several hundred pounds of equipment that will need to go on a on a small cell pole. So you get the the like for like look. It matches with the aesthetic. It blends in. But now it's strong enough to support the additional equipment needed for, for telecom to, um, to support that small cell equipment and, and serve customers in more densely populated areas. Which which I think is a really interesting, uh, you know, so obviously I'm in a marketing group and marketing team. And so, you know, you have, uh, you know, those that are in the business of really creating things, you know, from an artistic standpoint. So when I, I hear you talk about that, I'm thinking of the blend of of having something that, you know, naturally integrates into the landscape, but also is very functional. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that's uh, I'm thinking the first time I saw a, a, a small cell tower that uh, really it, it was I don't know, in this case, it looked it's like something in the landscape. And I was like, what is, is that what I thought it was? You know, I had to do a, a double take. So uh, but that's that's mm -hmm. really, really cool. So, you know, maybe, Kurt, you can help me. You know, we're talking about cell towers and I'm thinking about, uh, okay, or, or small cell poles, but I'm looking at my, my phone. And of course, one of the first things I, I remember seeing a while back is, you know, the idea of going and seeing 4G and 5G. And so I, I say, I don't know, maybe maybe G's are better. I, I, I have no idea at all. So, you know, right. for those that, that can, you know, aren't familiar, you know, help, help break it down for, for the common, common man or common woman or common person out there. So, you know, 4, 4G, 5G, what's what's the difference and what should we know? Well, you know, all we keep seeing are Gs. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the big question, what's, what's a G, right? And yeah. G just basically stands for generation. And, and it has to do with the generation of cellular technology. So as the cellular industry continues to innovate and change their overall protocols, they, they change in significant ways. They call it a new generation. So the very initial build out was, I guess, what you would call the 1G, but the, the one that most everybody's kind of familiar with uh, when they 
really came into the, you know, having a cell phone is going to be your second generation. It was primarily focused on, you know, voice. Uh, with the third generation, you had a lot more focus now on text and uh, continued increase in speeds with the uh, with voice. And then in the fourth generation, the focus kind of shifted because the way that we use our devices has shifted from uh, strictly voice and talking on the phone to now we're we're downloading things, we're we're surfing the internet on our phones, we're we're having more and more. And the industry's really seeing this as a direction that people are are using their devices and has really tailored the fifth generation or 5G that we, we all hear about to really play in the space of how do we get more data to the people who are using the data on the street. So it's a it's an increase in speeds that is significantly higher, it uses a new spectrum. Uh, that the fourth generation just doesn't tap. But at the same point, because of that technology, as Lauren had pointed out, it has really changed the way that the cellular rollout has gone. Rather than the large towers, we're now looking at, at much smaller and more localized uh, towers that now service a radius of 800 to 1,000 feet rather than uh, miles and miles. So. There's really a, a different change there, and, and as the industry looked at places to put all these towers, uh, one of the or all these equipment, all one of the most logical and the thing that really stood out was, hey, look at all these streetlight poles that are already in play. How do we utilize those to now add our equipment? Now, um, a lot of the equipment that's currently going out, honestly, is still in the 4G build out to help increase some of the data that Ford is taking on, but 5G technology is right on its heels, and, and as the adaptation from the device standpoint also moves forward and we start seeing some more 5G, true 5G devices coming out in the marketplace, that 5G is going to get rolled out in some of these big urban centers. Uh, from our standpoint, we're really looking at taking what we can and tailoring the applications to meet the customer's needs as well as the municipal or the utilities needs for these areas. So, uh, Lauren, maybe pivoting back over to you. I mean, I mean it's helpful. You know, I've, I've, I've heard through kind of understanding the difference between, you know, a small cell pole uh, and, and kind of the macro towers, you know, understanding, uh, you know, as Kurt explained, kind of the difference between 4G and 5G and, and then kind of how all this is it wraps together from, uh, you know, the offering that that uh, Amron is able to provide. Um, but but I guess maybe one of the, the pieces I think is helpful for for folks is, is understanding understanding kind of who who are those that would maybe most benefit from uh, the small cell uh, pole uh, technology that uh, that the Amaron team is able to provide uh, and and really you know why are you a good fit for for those folks. So we've been in the polls business for 50 years and we've really built up a reputation for our high quality process and, uh, and manufacturing techniques. And um, so small cell polls are really just one of the many offerings that we have, but it's, it's a unique market because there are a number of parties involved with vested, vested interest in the same things, but very different wants and needs and they come at it from different perspectives. And so we're able to bridge that gap between, say, the carriers and the municipalities to find a solution that works for everybody. Uh, the municipalities, like I mentioned uh, before, are really concerned with the aesthetics of the way everything looks. They want to make sure that the poles blend in with their existing landscape. They don't stick out like some something new. And in a lot of cases, we have decades long relationships with these municipalities because we've built other types of polls for them before. We've worked with them to develop standards for the city. And it's a very natural transition for us to move from developing the, the streetlight standards uh, to the small cell standards. And in most cases, they're going to look very, very similar. And then um, you have the carriers, for example, that are coming at it from a different angle. They're much more concerned with the functionality of the polls rather than the look. They want an efficient way to get their equipment up um, and functioning and, and operating so that they can serve their customers with the best service possible. And so um, we, we're able to act as kind of a, a go-between and, and collaborate with those both, both those vested interest parties 
uh, to figure out a solution that will work for everybody. So uh, with a design that aesthetically matches what the city needs, but with the additional structural support uh, to give the carriers the the access um, to be able to mount their equipment, the access ports to be able to get into it and uh, find something that works. For example, um, we've been working on a project or a couple projects in Memphis recently, and we worked with the city and the utility company to design a pole that met all of their needs um, visually. And then we've worked uh, with one of the carriers to make sure that their equipment is supported and, and that all their needs are met using those poles. And we've been manufacturing and shipping those out on a weekly basis for some time now. And now we're actually working with one of the other carriers because their needs vary you know, from company to company. And so we've made some modifications to the same pole because they still have to follow the standards that the city has set, um, but they also need to make sure they're accommodating their equipment. And so we make those minor changes to accommodate um, another company and then we'll you know, ship those poles out to them as well well and uh, they'll all look you know the same from the perspective of the city but we'll accommodate the the different needs of the carriers and so um that's that's kind of where we come in to to help facilitate that hmm. if you're just joining us we are talking about small cell pole technology from uh, nov's uh, pole products team uh and talking about uh, the the technology from the amaron group as we look to talk through uh, the uh, ideas from, you know, differences between 4G and 5G, uh, but also even understanding uh, the offerings that this uh, team has to offer. So if you have questions regarding uh, small cell pole, cell pole technology, um, or just have a question in general uh, that you've uh, maybe had and wanted to, to have uh, answered by our experts, uh, feel free to put your question in the comment section here, either on Facebook, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, uh, excuse me, Facebook, LinkedIn, or uh, uh, link, uh, LinkedIn, or YouTube, pardon me. And uh, we'd be happy to get your question. Uh, you can certainly always tweet us as well, uh, but we uh, definitely wanna see if we can get your question here on the show, in, uh, again, in the comment section on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. And again, we're talking about uh, small cell poles uh, technology uh, with regards to the Amaron, product offering here at NOV. And our guests again are Lauren Brooks, the sales manager for and business development uh, within Amaron, as well as Kurt Blackburn, who is one of the sales engineers. So uh, maybe I'll go back to you, Lauren. Uh, you know, I wanted to, to talk uh, more about uh, some of the offerings that uh, the team has to, to provide for, <clears throat> excuse me, for customers outside of uh, strictly the, the 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 hardware, right? So I know that is certainly one of the core competencies that the team's able to offer, but can you talk about maybe some of those uh, expanded offerings that uh, we're able to provide? Sure, sure. So we offer a number of, of services in addition to the products that we offer. For small cell poles in particular, there's a lot of customization that comes from project to project and customer to customer. So we have a great engineering team that works with the customers, whether it's small modifications they need to make from one city to the next on a, on a already designed pole or whether it's really designing something from the ground up. So we offer that from the engineering side. And we also offer stamped drawings and calculations. That's a professional engineer stamp that a lot of, uh, for a particular state that a lot of cities require for their permitting process to have those drawings and calculations stamped. So we offer that service as well. Then we also offer delivery and installation. We have our own fleet of trucks and we partner with a company that does installation work. And we also offer stockpiling and kind of any combination of those, uh, whether it's just delivery dropping something off at the side or if it's more of a full turnkey process that we offer. And as far as the stockpiling, uh, a number of our customers like to order their poles in advance, but they may not know exactly when they're going to be installing them and they don't have the yard space to store everything ahead of time. So we can store it at our facility and then ship it out according to their schedule, which can help them stay on track for, for what they need. So that's just you know one of, one of the, the many services that we offer uh, in addition to the, the products that we sell. Mm. So, Kurt, you know, when you look at, uh, you know, the industry, it seems to be, you know, one that, especially from a small cell pole uh, technology standpoint, seems to definitely be a space that's that is at the forefront of uh, technology development and innovation. So could you talk a little bit about how uh, Amaron is working with customers to support the, the technology, not only that we're seeing today, you know, as we talked about, but but also kind of what's coming down on the horizon? Yeah, so the one thing we really try to do is not 
put us into a box. Uh, a lot of the build outs that I'd mentioned right now are still an adaptation or an increase in the, the fourth generation, the 4G spectrum, but 5G is really hot on its heels. So when we're looking at putting together a spec, we're trying to ensure that any sort of infrastructure that we're working on is going to be able to accommodate the current needs of the 4G while uh, able to accommodate the increased capacities that are going to be required for the fifth generation. Uh, past that, as we're really looking at infrastructure that uh, we're intent on really lasting the test of time, uh, we're looking at future possible trends as well. So some of the things that we keep hearing about the Internet of Things, where we have over a trillion devices that are going to be connected here relatively quickly uh, to some of the smart city initiatives that have been going around, including cameras, gunshot detections, things of that sort, that we're able to allow the polls to accommodate those increasing technologies, as well as some technologies that perhaps aren't quite as well established or understood that, that aren't quite to the rollout stages yet, but perhaps more uh, just in the thought, uh, such things as edge computing, where uh, rather than sending these large amounts of data uh, from things such as autonomous cars back to a centralized server to process, obviously there's a latency issue there. Is to actually process that information at the point of data acquisition. So you end up with servers and, and data crunching that happens actually at the structures themselves. So try to look into the future a little bit and make sure that the poles that we're designing uh, aren't just going to hold up for the test of time from an environmental or structural standpoint, but also from a technological standpoint that they're not going to become obsolete. Right. Okay. Well, we're, we're maybe, I know that I've been, been asking you a lot of the questions and we're, we're about to, to get into the, the Q and a portion. There was a comment that I did see, uh, in the, uh, the chat window here. And it was, it looked like, uh, uh, someone was, was, uh, making a comment that it seems like from their perspective that a lot of uh, the common designs that they see uh, tend to be uh, 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 cell cell poles that look more like a, a, a in a tree design of sorts. But I think just the image we saw, you can actually incorporate that into obviously a, a, a light structure. So I kind of wanted it wasn't really a question, but more of an observation. But I kind of wanted to pose that uh, to to either one of you. Is is that something that you're 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 seeing? Is is it really? moving more towards uh, more incorporating it in a like a lighting structure or something that's in the environment is that where you you all focus on or, or how do you how do you see that so i'll, I'll jump in on that michael yeah. so the trees and things of that sort uh, there were clock towers uh most of these are large structures that are actually continuations of macro designs so they're really more focused on uh, the fourth generation type technology. What we're really focused on is the fifth generation, the distributed cellular networks. In most of these cases, these are going to be significantly smaller structures. And our goal is really to more blend in with the existing infrastructure than trying to blend in with something like a tree. So we're really trying to make these structures look more like the existing poles that are out there. So when they do get switched out, you have a consistent aesthetic throughout a municipal or, or given jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not going to try to take all of the time asking questions. Certainly have some folks uh, that are watching with us that, that uh, have some questions of their own. So we're going to bring in Shelby Dumain to see if we can get some of our viewers' questions mm -hmm. answered right now. So, hey, Shelby, take it away. Hey, Michael. So this first question comes from Bouchon on LinkedIn. And uh, he was wondering, is it Internet of Things based? So could you talk about that a little bit more? And this goes to Lauren or Kurt, either one. Yeah, I guess I touched on it a little bit earlier, so I'll jump in again. Uh, IoT is really the connectivity of everything. So Internet of Things, it's, it's really where now we're looking at having everything from your doorbell to your toaster oven connected to the Internet, right? So it, this isn't necessarily IoT based, but this is going to help support the IoT with additional bandwidth and additional speeds that are going to be coming from this fifth generation network. So it really is designed to accommodate all of the additional data that's coming through. Mm -hmm. okay, great. So this next one comes from uh, Katie on LinkedIn. And uh, she was wondering how will incorporating these polls change the experience of community members where they are installed? 
And kind of going along with that, um, why should municipalities prioritize including small cell technology in their developments? Um, well, I can I can take that one. So I think that um, as far as why should they why should they focus on including that? It's um, it's just being able to support new technology as it as it comes in. You don't want to um, not be able to have your citizens taking advantage of the newest technology simply because your city doesn't have the infrastructure to support it. And so I think um, cities definitely have, especially you know larger cities. That, uh, typically trends start in the larger cities and then move into the smaller towns. Although in some cases there are smaller towns that are very active on, on the 5G build out as well. And so uh, we work very closely with the carriers to figure out where, where they're targeting next and how they're moving through. Um, but we've seen a lot of support from the cities um, in most cases who, who want to build out that infrastructure and want to have that service for their citizens. But like we had mentioned, and, and like I think your question is alluding to, they want to make sure that it's not at the expense of the aesthetics of their city. They want to make sure that that technology is coming in, but not sticking out and looking funny and and interrupting the you know the daily life of its citizens. And so, um, they, the FCC actually has a mandate that the cities cannot reject the carriers from coming in and building poles, but they can say your pole has to look like X. Mm -hmm. And that's where we work to help design those you know um, like for like poles mm -hmm. that. Uh, match the aesthetic and and blend in with the existing surroundings. It's particularly important in historical zones, for example, neighborhoods. People don't want something um, real obvious in their front yard, and so that's why in a lot of cases we're just um, replacing existing light poles. So they're things that have been there. People are already used to them, and it's simply a very similar looking, if if not you know to the naked eye, almost exactly the same. Uh, a pole that matches and then has the additional equipment on it. So you get the same look that you always had with the additional advanced technology that, that the people living in that city, living and working in that city can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, so this last question we have uh, comes from Kim and she was wondering, you know, where are a lot of these small cells? So I know you mentioned kind of the small towns, but um, are they common or still a little novel? I think they're they're getting to be a lot more common. Um, again, there we try to blend in. Um, it, you know, all of the um, the the technology. You know, the idea is to blend in. So if you're not looking for it, you may not notice. Um, I certainly know that before I moved into into this industry, I didn't really notice. And now I, I look at every poll that I pass, and I wonder, you know, oh, who made this one? And and um, you know, what, what kind of small cell structure is this one supporting and things like that. So, um, yeah, they're, they're definitely getting more common. Um, a lot of the ones um, we've installed have been in California, but we're also in many different states. Uh, I live in Chicago. We have a number, uh, a number of small cell poles here um, across to, to the East Coast as well and, and everywhere in between. And um, but the, the market is definitely growing. There's a lot of opportunity out there. And uh, we're we're looking to to grow and and continue to support this market and support our customers. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. It's like uh, almost counterintuitive. So for the for for most folks, they say, "Hey, I want to make sure that everyone sees you know in bright yellow or green." Here's my product. And success for you is you can't tell that we're actually in your, right. in your neighborhood, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. no. no, that's that's great. That's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Well, well, thanks, uh, Shelby. Those are some those are some really good good questions, especially that last one. Yeah, I was kind of kind of wondering as well. So definitely look. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, as I'm walking around or, or or driving around, I'll I'll start to try to keep my my eyes out for uh, for some of these uh, small cell poles. That's that's really 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 cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I guess uh, before we we close out, I did want to ask. Uh, you know, we, you, you talked about some of the aesthetics and some of the benefits there. Could you maybe just uh, expound a little bit more on you know some of those options that you can provide? So you, you, we talked about some of the light poles. Could you just maybe talk a little bit more about that for those that might uh, maybe need a little more visual picture in their in their mind? Yeah, I can uh, jump in on that, Michael. We have uh, really been the preeminent supplier for concrete poles for the last 50 years. And and really kind of on the cutting edge of design for concrete as well as aesthetics and quality. So uh, we have been written into the specifications for street lighting for many units and utilities for many, many years coast to coast. Um, so we are continuing to utilize that technology and adapt it into this new market for use with small cells to be able to accommodate the additional equipment that's necessary. 
Uh, in addition, we also have a, a full line of steel uh, structures that are uh, tapered steel, and they're primarily used for the uh, departments of transportation uh, throughout the U.S. And we do have a line of those as well that are able to be adapted and updated to pick up some of that uh, new equipment on some of these structures where perhaps you have uh, a, a steel structure, lighting structure that's already in place. So we have the ability to do that as well. And, and again, we're doing these and uh, setting standards within Washington, California, Florida, um, as well as some of the projects, uh, Memphis that Lauren had brought up and, and other pockets throughout the US. All right. Well. I know that uh, we have covered quite a bit of ground, but uh, as always, there's never enough time to to get as as much as I'd like in. So for those folks that maybe just want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, or have a, a question that uh, maybe they're, they're watching this replay, uh, you can send an email to uh, Lauren Brooks and we'll put her email on the screen. So that's lauren.brooks at nov.com or you can send one over to Kurt and uh, you can get your question answered. Um, I know from, from talking to them before, they're, they're mighty friendly people. So uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to, to take your, your question uh, or, or comment. Uh, also, if you'd like to look at uh, some of the product offerings in more detail on your own time, you can actually head over to their website and that's amaronpoles.com. That's A-M-E-R-O-N-P-O-L-E-S, amaronpoles, all one word. Dot com and there you can find out more on the offerings uh, that uh, this team has as well as understand more uh, about our conversation and some of the topics that we discussed. So I uh, really appreciate your insight and expertise uh, to, to Kurt and to Lauren. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So we're gonna head over to Shelby Dumain now to get the answer for our Rig Geeks post of the week. And uh, just to remind folks, Shelby, we kind of gave them an opportunity to guess at what, uh, which one of the, the images that we showed uh, is a, an actual offering from Amaron Poles, right? That's right. So we have an image actually, we're gonna show it again. So we asked out of A, B, C, or D, you know, which of these were Amaron Poles? And I did see uh, Richard there in the comments did correctly guess that the answer is all of the above. Yeah. Another, hold another little trick question on y'all. That is um, the question I failed at in, in primary school and everywhere. It's always the, all of the above, but that's that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah, so they won't, they, they're not, the answers aren't always all of the above, but in this case it was. So all um, four of those are different polls that Amron has. And, and Michael, like you mentioned, uh, kind of amronpolls.com, you can kind of see a little bit more in detail because um, this isn't even all of the polls. There are still more, but these are just four that we selected to kind of show today. Uh, so thank you everyone for submitting your questions and your comments and, and guessing at the Rig Geek question. Uh, kind of like Michael mentioned, you know, we love getting your questions and comments. So if you have one about the show or for a future episode, you can submit those uh, either to uh, social media at NOV.com. That's where if you just want to send us an email um, or you can call us at 346-223-4799. Promise I'm, we're going to get a jingle for that at some point. Uh, <laughs> if I promise it on air, we have to do it. So <laughs> that number is 346-223-4799. You can stay anonymous when you leave us the voicemail or you can let us know your name and we'll feature you. But look forward to kind of seeing everyone's uh, thoughts and, and comments and questions there. Great, all right. Well, thanks Shelby. And thank you for joining us here on our episode of NOV Live. And, and again, just want to reinforce it. If you have questions, if you have an idea for a future topic that you'd like for us to consider showcasing on NOV Live in a, in a future episode, again, feel free to send us an email that's social media at NOV.com, or uh, if you have a jingle that you'd like for us to even listen to, feel free to send us an email, social media at NOV.com, or give us a call, plus one, three, four, six, two, two, three, four, seven, nine, nine. So for all of us here at NOV, thanks for watching and thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you later.